Hi, welcome to this last presentation on ecozones. My name is Divna, so let's start. We will talk about the ecozones we have left for today. First will be Indomalaya. By old division, this used to be a part of African zone, like a part, a sub-region sub of it. And altogether, it was called Oriental region, so African and Indomalayan. But now, Worldwide Foundation, by this last division, gave it the status of a separate ecozone. In the Malayan, uh, sub Indian subcontinent, this part of China, and all these archipelagos, all the way to Wallace Line, which I forgot to mention before, but the Wallace Line is a really important detail in the history of bio biogeography because the Wallace guy who uh, noticed it is the person who first started ta thinking about the separation because he on his uh, trips he noticed this huge difference in uh, fauna and flora between these two islands and um, so he started thinking about how evolution worked and how, why separate life forms are present in such such a close physically close areas and so on so for, from today today we know this line as um, it's uh, between Borneo and Sumatra but there are some other options as well where it is but let's say it's uh, somewhere around here and today we recognize that line as a uh, separation between the Malayan and Australian ecozone. So this Indo-Malayan ecozone includes two large peninsulas of India and Indochina, uh, Ceylon, Burma, Philippines, and Borneo, uh, these numerous archipelagos around it. As I mentioned, the Wallace Lines is division between these two close by ecozones. Um, the climate is tropical with uniform temperatures during the year and a large humidity and monsoon type in Malaysian part. It is divided into uh, three bioregions, which would be areas that contain a certain level of taxonomic uh, specificity, but higher than, than species like family, genus, and so on. Uh, those three bioregions would be India, Indochina, and Philippines and islands, the third one. The uh, difference between India and the rest of the Asia is that India in the past was a separate continent, so separate landmass, let's call it which at one point hit Asia, so collided with Asia, and where that's when the Himalayas was, were formed. And the the collision happened, it just became a part of, a, of this whole area. But the thing is that one part of, of its evolution, India has on its own, so that's why this area is divided as a separate ecozones compared to the rest of the Asian continent that today belongs. Okay, so flora specific for, for Indo-Malayan ecozone uh, is most of Indo-Malaya was originally covered by tropical and subtropical moist broadleaf forest. Um, tropical and subtropical dry broadleaf forests were found mostly in Indian parts of South Southeast Asia, so this area but now the tropical moist forests of Indomalaya are dominant by rainforest trees that come from the uh, Diptocarpaceae family. This would be one representative of it. So it's a new, new sp specific family for this region. Um, the flora on Indomalaya includes many families that exist on the ancient supper continent of Laurasia and Gondwana. And that is because of its history is being part of both supracontinent at, at some point. So India firstly was part of Gondwana and afterwards it collided with the Asia, as I told you, which was actually um, Laurasia. So it has a bit of everything. Uh, the vegetation is of tropical forest, trees of sure robusta, tectona grandis, uh, then we have Termialia, Albiata, and Pterocarpus. And in the base of one Gang River, uh, there is a jungle, and there is growing a lot of plants of palms, like Calamus rotang, or bamboos and wines. And it has a very rich flora with over 20,000 species and featured level 
endemism at, at all levels. Um, 16 endemic families, for example, Matoniate, Pentaliate, of vascular plants, and a large number of endemic genera and species. Um, actually, no other ecosome consists of so much archaic forms of the plants as Indo Malaysian. Um, in this forest of Sumatra occurs uh, Reflesia Arnold and uh, Sonda Islands. There is a carnivore plant of the genus Nepenthes. In Malaysian region, coconut, palm, banana, cinnamon, and black pepper. You can see most of those species here. Claw, indigo, sugar, flames, uh, so on, could be seen. Two orders of mammals, about fa fauna, two orders of mammals are endemic to Indomalaya. So it's Caligo's flying lemur and the three sh shrews, the one you can see here. Uh, the animal families of, of Crasenictiride, which would be a bat, or the Atomide, the Rodent, so Asanotide, the Atomide here, the Patatafomide, which would be a type of mouse, Tarside here, Lamuraiai or Hilobatide, are also endemic for these, these ecosomes. Varanus comodiensis, different types of Tapirus, uh, then Leopards, tigers, water buffaloes, elephants, rhinos, tapirs, orangutans, and gibbons are all found within the Indomalayan ecosystem, and some species are really specific for this era. For example, orangutan monkey is only found on Sumatra and Borneo. About the birds, the, the ones that could be seen on these ecoregions would be peasants, pitas, babblers, and flow peckers. Uh, now on, on close next by ecozone, neighborly ecozone for Indomalaya is the Australia, or Australasia as it's called. Uh, this area was a part of a bigger kingdom of Notogea, which included Australia, New Zealand, so Australia, New, New Zealand, Tasmania, and uh, this part of a fire country of the tip of of uh, uh, South America, but today we have Australasia as a separate ecozone, including Australia, New Zealand, um, Tasmania, and Papua Nova New Guinea, being all part as a Australasia kingdom, all the way to to Wallace zone. So Papua New Guinea, all the archipelagos around it, all the way to Wallace line, which lays somewhere around here. Uh, it phytogeography this division, this ecozone does not include New Zealand, which is uh, by phytobiography division is a part of the kingdom. Um, flora is very rich with like 12,000 species and 9,000 endemic species, or 75% of total flora of the field is endemic. This fact indicates that the island has long been de developed as a separate biogeographic unit and the answer for such rich and distinct biodiversity is in its lonely past. Namely, all these islands separated from Gondwana supercontinent really, really early and since they are islands between each other they were separated as well but during ice ages, waters between them was shallower, so some species could migrate. That's why they are belonging to the same ecozone, but they're really distinct for the rest of the world because they separated from the huge landmass of Gondwana as the first separate landmass, and since they are developing separately. So about flora. like. Banksia here, or Myrtace with Melaleuca and um, uh, Eu Eucalyptus tree, really famous one for koala, of course, and for example, Fabacia represented by, by Acacia, really also kind of famous tree by its silhouette. 
about the relic species representatives of which would be Tsikas and in the, as a representative of Zamyats which would be Macrozamia and Bovenia and they are really old relics from the pre-glacial period. They could be found even today on, on Australia continent. About the, the fauna of Australia, most famous is for, of course, marsupiali and monotremata mammals and ratted birds. Uh, the only other place marsupialia could be found is the South America, and this is one of the proofs that these two continents were one once one. Um, so under monotremata we consider kangaroos, koalas, echidnas, platypus and so on. Uh, Some species got extinct after the coding civilization came to Australia, so when people started moving from Europe to Australia, so under pressure of competition with land mammals, because they people when came, they brought with them all the mammals or animals that were, they were familiar with, they were um, common for the area they're coming from, basically Europe. From there it arised a lot of competition with the inhabited animals, and they couldn't compete with them, so a lot of uh, marsupialia mammals disappeared. Mm, by that time, only one third of the, uh, let's say, big animals in Australia were mammals, so real mammals. There was only one third of all, all mammals in, in Australia, and in New Zealand, there is no native and there is no native and mammals at all. Australia has 13 endemic bird families, including emus, cassowars, kiwi, kakadu, macaroni penguin, kagoo, uh, cactus, honey eaters, and birds of paradise. Uh, large reptiles, including monitor lizards, komodo dragon, kingi, or field net lizard, sphenodon, and, and crocodiles are an ecologically important predators in the Australia ge geographically and, and as an ecozone. Amu, Echidna, Kiwi bird, Platypus, Kingi, Lizard, Macaroni, Penguin, Kangoo or Parrot Owl. They are all endemic for Australasia ecozone. The last ecozone we have left to talk about is the Neotropic Ecozone and this ecozone includes South and Central America and, and a bit of North, North America, Southern Mexican lowlands and also Caribbean islands altogether uh, because these regions share a large number of, of plant and animal groups. Neotropical Floristic Kingdom excludes southernmost of South America, the peak I told you about in a previous uh, slide and which was part of Antarctic Kingdom. Uh, so the worldwide found has divided the Neotropic into eight bioregions and these bioregions include Amazonia, Caribbean, Central America, Central Andi, Eastern South America, Northern Andi, Orinoco and Southern South America. Uh, this ecozone is home of large rainforest of the world. So like you can see here, the whole part is basically um, rainforest and within it, it has a rainforest around the Amazon River. And this area supports the enormous biodiversity we find on here. Uh, so dense forests of the Amazon trees can be higher high over 60 meters and in there we there is abundant palm trees wines like like this pignoniace malpigiace sapindace uh, this is epiphyte bromeliace then we have heave and a parasitic balanoforace plant that looks a bit like a like a mushroom pretty amazing flora of this neotropic ecozone uh, but next to this uh, less known species typical ones that were firstly originated in South America are, are plants 
including like potato, tomato, cocoa, maize, cotton, and then so on. That we that it were spread all around the world, and now you can find them everywhere. But they were firstly originated in uh, neotropic ecozone. About the fauna of neotropic ecozone, there is 31 endemic bird family, and this is basically twice as much as any any other ecozone. So it's really high percentage of endemism in bird families in this area. For example, hummingbird was first originated in South America, uh, but some other animal species are as originated are still restricted to this area. And there will be like, for example, New World Monkeys, or Order of Oxantra, which would be uh, anteaters, you can see it here, anteaters, or sloths, with three and four finger sloths, armadillo, which is not on the picture, uh, but also um, opossum, that is the only marsupialia mammal that can be found next to Australia anywhere in the world is this place and it's opossum and also sh uh, shrew opossum we don't have it here but as well uh, capybara uh, guinea pigs and, and of course well known chinchillas well known for devastation for fur coats and so on Okay, we're finished with eco zones. I hope you learned something new and you're interested more in knowing more about them. Uh, there is a really nice site of a BBC Nature about every eco zone. So if you are in that kind of mood, you can go check it out. It's, it's really amazing. And um, okay, thanks for listening. Uh, see you in the next presentation. Bye.